recording in progress. And I pray to God this sounds much better than the last one. Over the weekend, I got a brand new microphone, so I'm hoping, praying to God that everything sounds good. I did a lot of audio tests prior to starting recording, so I am praying to God that everything translated well and this sounds really good. Even if it sounds like garbage because I'm lazy, it's still going to get posted anyway. But then for the next episode, I'll figure it out. I'll fix it, make sure everything's running smoothly. Um, in case you're wondering, my hair is just in a little bum back here. I did not cut my hair, so do not worry. The flow is still very much live and well. Welcome back to .NET Phil's, .NET Phillies. I'm a I'm thinking about rebranding .NET Phil's, just kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit better, but I have a bunch of shirts and stuff that says .NET Philly, so, so rebranding soon, possibly, possibly, definitely, uh, definitely, maybe, uh, but in today's episode, we have headlines, we're going to go over the Phillies win out of two out of three down in Washington, we are then unveiling a couple, uh, we then have another edition of he was a Phil. We then are unveiling a brand new segment on top of he was a Phil because I feel like I'm not getting enough length out of he was a Phil. If I'm being blunt with you, um, I'm gonna. It's called Minor League Digest. I'm gonna kind of highlight a couple good things happening in the Phillies minor league system just to 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 kind of give you guys the listeners kind of insight into what's going on on the minor league side of stuff. And then that way, you know, if we see a guy like a Orion Kirkering make his major league debut, it's kind of not out of nowhere. You kind of have an idea about who this person is. So I kind of want to dive into some of the minor league stuff, and that's at all levels, not just AAA. Um, and then we're, we'll go over the series preview against the Cardinals. The Phillies are currently uh, playing the Cardinals as I'm recording this. So if you see my reaction to, to XYZ, you understand that the Phillies are currently playing right now, but I'm determined for the brand. I said Monday night, I will get this out to you guys, and here we are. I just got done work, so we are ready to rock and roll. I have a Mountain Dew Baja Blast. Ready to do it. Let me check. Make sure everything's good. All right. So, let's get into it. Uh, since the last time we recorded, the Phillies unveiled their City Connect uniforms. And now I'll bring up a picture of the City Connect uniforms Right here, I'm sure everybody watching has seen. If it'll focus, that'd be really neat. Yep, there they are. Um, honestly, honestly, I kind of like them. I kind of like them to be honest with you. Um, so back in January, these jerseys were leaked. However, we didn't know the legitim the legitimacy. Yes, that's the right word. The legitimacy of them, we now know that obviously those leaks back in January were the exact jerseys that we ended up getting. And initially, I didn't like them just because it was just the jersey, just had the Philly, the light blue into like the, the navy blue. I didn't love it. But after seeing it on the players, after seeing the whole uniform, everything, the meaning of everything like that, call me easily gullible, but I love them. I'm a big fan of the City Connect jerseys. I think they could have been a lot worse. I also think they could have been a little better. It, it was just kind of, what's your poison? To me, me personally, I'm a big fan of them. I think they nailed it. I think uh, it wasn't the worst thing in the world. It wasn't a Dodger situation. It wasn't a, uh, who has a really bad City Connect? It wasn't, um, oh God, oh God. there's like a glaring example of like a poor City Connect that I'm not thinking of right now. So we'll, we'll just go with it could have been a Dodgers situation, yet they're getting another one for some reason. I guarantee it's going to be Japanese inspired because they have Itani and uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto on that team. So I guarantee they're going to play into the Japanese side of stuff in their new city connects. But for right now, they only have the thing that says Los Dodgers and it's really, really bad. And so I really feel like it's kind of in the mid tier. Like it's not great, but it's not terrible. It's not the worst by any means. So uh, we will see them unveiled Friday. A uh, home game against the Pittsburgh Pirates. We will see the Sanchez on the mound. At least he's scheduled, uh, bearing any setbacks, God forbid. So we'll see the Sanchez unveil the the City Connect jerseys. And again, they could have been worse. They could have been better. I'm not really complaining one way or another. I think they did really, really well with what they put out there. 
Uh, the Phillies also acquired Jose Rodriguez from the uh, Chicago White Sox in exchange for cash, who's recently DFA'd. Interesting um, prospect. Had a 729 OPS, 21 home runs, a lot of swing and miss in his game, but there's something there. And um, I trust the Phillies front office to not just trade for anybody. So um, interesting name to look out for, Jose Rodriguez of the White Sox, now with the Phils. We then acquired Benoni Robles from the Dodgers in exchange for Connor Brogdon. Brogdon obviously DFA'd by the Phillies this past week, and I knew in my gut that he was going to go to a team like the Dodgers, like the the Rays, like, um, what's another team that's just like a pitching whack? The Brewers. One of those teams, like one of those smart pitching mechanic teams that's going to get the most out of Connor Brogdon. I'm happy for him. I wish him nothing but but the best for Connor Brogdon, but you know for a fact he's going to have like a two ERA with the Dodgers. They're just going to figure something out because that's just what they do. They take guys who are bad at one team and just make them good. It's infuriating. There's a reason the Dodgers traded for him. So I trust the Dodgers. They're, they see something in him. And they're going to go from there. Uh, Robles, looking at what they got in return, Robles uh, in 250 and in two thirds through five seasons, a minor league ball has a 4.67 ERA, but throws triple digits, has a lot of stuff there. They can mold him into a, rele- a nasty reliever. So that's who they got in exchange for Connor Brogdon. So solid return for a guy that didn't really have a place here anymore. And obviously, because they DFA'd him, he's been bad for a year plus at this point. So like I said, fresh start for Connor Brogdon. I wish him nothing but the best. So good luck to him. Uh, and better news, we have Orion Kirkering should be active by Friday against uh, the Pirates. He was in a rehab stint, and I believe they said the plan was for him to throw one or two more games. Then he's going to be activated by the weekend. So going to be great. And that bullpen is just stupid as is. Now you're adding in Orion Kirkring, which I know a lot of Phillies fans have written him off as like this bum because of his playoffs performance, but this kid is nasty, and he is going to be so good for so long. Then you look at that Phillies bullpen. Your right-handed options are Sir Anthony Dominguez, Junior Marte, who we'll talk about, Jeff Hoffman, and um, Orion Kirkring. That is stupid. And then from the left side, you have Alvarado, Strom, and Soto. That is a damn, damn Damn good bullpen. That is a disgustingly good bullpen. And I'm here for it because everybody wrote off the Phillies bullpen for the first game. And turns out when you play 162 games, there's going to be a chance for them to turn it around. Delicious. So getting into the series against the Washington Nationals. Now, one of my favorite traditions that has happened over these past few years is them resurfacing that tweet that the Nationals tweeted out in 2020 saying beating Philadelphia is not as hard as Philadelphians say it is. The Phillies have then since absolutely walloped the Washington Nationals. It's a it's one of my favorite traditions that we have going to this day. So um, game one, the Phillies won 4 nothing. My player of the game was Bryce Harper. This was a, a, a weird game. Um, it was a game where they had a lot of opportunities. They had a lot of ducks on the stranded on the pond, um, which infuriated me because this team, death taxes not be able to hit with runners in scoring position has been the absolute unreal uh, motto. That's the word motto of this team recently. So for them to kind of do it still, and especially against a lesser opponent in the Washington Nationals, it was alarming. Um, and, and kind of like Jack Fritz said on on ninety four WIP, I mean, how will this hold up against better teams? How will the Phillies be put in this position where they're going against the Braves, the Dodgers, the Astros, the Yankees, the the Red Sox, any of those teams? How does this play out? Luckily, it was against the Nationals. So they were able to scrounge out the 4 nothing victory. You had Marsh with a sack fly. You had Schwer with an RBI single. Um, you, It was just kind of, um, it was just, it was just, a, it was a good game. It was a good win. 
it just should have been way out of hand and it should have been not four nothing it should have been six seven eight nine ten nothing um but you then had nola who walked four and five and two thirds now a lot of those walks were due to the inconsistencies behind the plate i forget the home plate umpire's name so i apologize but it was just poor home plate it was just a poor poor um strike zone excuse me for nola he looked better than what he did in his first start, but it comes down to do those walks then against a better team, do those walks then turn into runs. Something that I, I'm i not ready, I'm not waving the flag with Nola yet. He is simply too good for this to concern me. It was a step in the right direction. Now, if he came out and did what he did against the Braves again, against this Nationals team, which is significantly worse than that Braves team, then I'm like, oh, we shouldn't have paid him all that money. But I wasn't worried. It was a solid performance. It was a encouraging from the standpoint of it's good that we got Aaron Nola a solid start, a step in the right direction kind of thing. Then a Matt Strom coming in, and Strom ever since opening day has been an absolute menace to lefties to righties. Does not matter. Matt Strom is him. There is a reason we extended Matt Strom. He continues to be one of the most valuable and underrated pitchers in baseball. So Matt Strom was very, very good, continues to be very, very good, but particularly was very, very good in this game. You had Sir Anthony, who looked really, really good in this game as well. Sir Anthony, solid inning, had a one strikeout, only threw like 12 pitches. Very, very effective. Solid outing for Sir Anthony Dominguez. Very happy to see him. He then had Alvarado come in, slam the door, Phil's win for nothing. Very, very, excuse me, very, very solid game. It was encouraging. And coming back to Matt Strom, my Bryce Harper, thank you so much for saving my life award for this series, does go to Matt Strom. Just because I love me some, some Stromy. I love him. I think he's a solid player, solid dude. Love him. Love everything about Matt Strom. And he eats ass, by the way. So shout out to Matt Strom. Then game two, the Phillies won five to two. My player of the game was JT Real Muto. Uh, JT was fantastic in this game, had that three-run home run in the third. So, pardon me. So Bohm had an RBI triple in the second, um, kind of got past Lane Thomas in that. And it reminded me of, was it Randall Gritchick in right field against the Nationals in the 2019 wildcard game where the ball like trickled through and it kind of led to the Nationals going on that run that they did, ultimately winning the World Series? Reminded me of that a lot. Scored on the triple. Uh, then they intentionally walked Bryce Harper in the third to get to JT Realmuto. I don't think the Nationals got the memo that JT was in the bio lab all season, and or excuse me, all off season. Promptly hits a three-run home run on a two count. Absolutely crushed it. And you know when JT gets it, he kind of like hits it and kind of like stands out like that. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but then the the Nationals kind of answer right back against Ranger Suarez. Hit Joey Gallo hits a two-run home run to make it four to two. Um, now, I'm going to say, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. When it's four to two, a lot of stuff happened in between. I'm going to say this, and I don't want people to get mad at me because this is probably going to be the clip that I post on TikTok. Alec Bohm is a above average defender at third base. If you have seen the way he has progressed from 2022 to now, he is a significantly better defender than what people give him credit for. Now, is he fantastic over there? No. Is he he's slightly above average over there at third base? He is not a liability anymore. And I think people need to start putting recognition on Alec Bohm's defense. And here come the nerds. He had X Woba. I don't care. It's called the eye test, you freaking nerds. Grow up, watch some Alec Bohm highlights on defense. The guy can pick it. Period. End of conversation. Thank you. So um, one person that is not good defensively is Trey Turner, who has several errors and is not a very good defensive shortstop. 
we'll go from there. Uh, Jeff Hoffman, very good at baseball. He had uh, an inning and two thirds, one walk, one strikeout. Absolute balls of steel coming in there. He is a dog. I love Jeff Hoffman. I've been on the Jeff Hoffman train, train for a while now. I I love him. I love Jeff Hoffman with all my heart. Uh, then you had Marsh with an RBI single tonight, adding a little insurance to, pardon me, adding some a little, uh, excuse me, adding a little insurance run for the fills, which was good to see. Um, and then we get to the ninth inning, and the ninth inning was interesting. Phillies have a 5-2 lead. They decide to go with Alvarado again in back-to-back -back games, which I don't necessarily agree with. I feel like Greg Soto could have finished that game. But regardless, they put in Alvarado, whatever. The strike zone got very wonky in the ninth inning. And it, again, this whole series was very, very bad from an umpiring, home plate umpiring perspective. It was very bad. It was very inconsistent strike zone on both sides. I'm not just saying from the Phillies, from the national side as well. It went both ways. Alvarado was getting shafted left, right, and center by the, the umpire in uh, in that game. It was just bad, but whatever. They got the win. He threw like 20-odd pitches where he really should have only had to have thrown like 18, 19, but whatever. The Phillies win. They come out with a W, and um, that was that. So we get to game three, and they lose three to two. Now, admittedly, I was not able to watch this game in depth like I would any other game. My brother, my older brother uh, was... Um, my older brother was expecting a child, so we had his baby shower. It was a co-ed baby shower. I know, the, the, whatever, norms and whatever. But I was there attending that, so my attention was a little pointed towards there. So I wasn't necessarily allowed to, uh, not allowed. I did, didn't necessarily watch this game as in-depth as I would any other game. So my, my analysis of this game is a little light. Uh, Chris Sanchez battled a little bit, and I also think that it came into with the strike zone. Junior Marte worked out of trouble, which, again, he has just been incredible. Junior Marte is just, he looks like how Alvarado did in 22 after they sent him down they brought him back up. Looks the same, like I said in the last episode, it looks like he is prioritizing accuracy over velocity, which is huge. Like, they, the Phillies just have dudes. They just have dudes on dudes on dudes. Pause. You get me, though. They just have a lot of talented players on the pitching side of stuff, and it's such a good contrast to what we're what we've seen over these past you know decade plus prior to making to the playoffs in twenty twenty two when you know we were throwing out God Blake Parker and 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 Mike Moore and Tommy Hunter Heath Henry Brandon Workman just bad 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 reliever after bad reliever. Now we have dudes. We have dudes on guys on guys on dudes. Um. And, and, you know, from an offensive perspective, Mackenzie Gore is actually very good. He's coming into his own. You know, he was that big trade piece that they got from San Diego in the Juan Soto trade back in 2022. He's finally starting to come into his own of he's going to be a, a dude. So he threw the ball extremely well, not taking anything away from Mackenzie Gore. He's a very, very good pitcher. And, um, yeah, they just struggled. Didn't work a lot of good at bats. Just bad base running all over the place. Um, on all three games, they need to really figure that out. Now, I really, really thought that that's what spring training's for. But what do I know as as just some guy from from Doylestown? What do I know from from that perspective? Um, so they took two out of three. Could should have they should should have they should they have swept Jesus? Should they have swept? Sure. Every team that wins two out of the first three thinks you're going to sweep the last game. It's all about execution. They were poor. You had Sosa and Merrifield stepped up, and it's good to see those bench players kind of step up because when the Turners, the Harpers, the Schwarbers are not producing at the level that you expect them to, it's good that they have the type of depth, depth that they do where it's Merrifield, Sosa, Pache, Rojas, Stubbs, those guys coming in and producing. We saw Stubbs today had an RBI single. So, excuse me, not an RBI single, just kept the line moving. But 
it's production on all front, on all fronts, the bench, the starters, everybody on, th on top, the bottom. It's always good when, when the big boys, the Harpers, like I said, the Harpers, Ramitos, Turner, Schwarber, whoever aren't stepping up. It's good that those guys that are substitutes and, and, and the bench players, the role, not role players stepping up. And we saw that in, in this last game. So it, it I'm not mad about it. It's the nationals. They're going to be good in a few years, but for right now we can keep beating up on them and we're going to continue to beat up on them. It just sucked because they easily should have swept. They just made a lot of stupid mistakes uh, in this final game from what I've gathered and seen with highlights and everything like that. They just made a lot of poor decisions, a lot of bad base running, bad counts, bad, bad, bad. Me um, that and Jesse Winker turning into a gold glove uh, fielder, but that's not a hero nor there. Um, yeah, just, just bad, bad, bad. So getting into new segment, minor league digest. I was trying to find something um something that'll that'll pop digest you know like readers digest whatever blah 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 digest 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 minor league digest so in this i'm just gonna highlight a couple interesting things happen around the minor leagues it could be one thing could be three could be a whole laundry list could be in its own episode but i want to make sure that um you guys are in the loop like myself um to kind of understand what's going on on all levels what prospects are coming up so that way when the prospects do get promoted, make a debut, get traded, you guys understand who that person was. Like we saw last year, like I mentioned, Ryan Kirkring coming up through the system. A couple of years ago, we saw Ben Brown Ben Brown uh, get traded for David Robertson. Who's Ben Brown? I kind of want to explain that. And Ben Brown, the reason I mentioned Ben Brown is because he's making his major league debut. He is now on the Cubs roster. So I wanted to kind of uh, explain that. So that way, you know, when these moves happen, we kind of have a better understanding about who these guys are. Um, the first person that I want to highlight is George Klassen made his pro debut. George Klassen was a six round pick last year, 193rd overall um, in his pro debut in single a five innings, one hit, no one runs, no walks, nine strikeouts. That is huge for George Klassen. That is awesome to see. It was a very positive start to your pro debut. I mean, nine shut or excuse me, five shutout innings and nine strikeouts. That's pretty damn good for for your big league, not big league, but your professional debut in an organization. That's huge. Um, Michael Mercado was a name that was tossed around in spring training a lot. The Phillies traded for Michael Mercado in exchange for Adam Leverett and cash considerations. He is lo he looked great in spring training. Also looks like that spring training is continuing into his season in, in AAA Lehigh Valley. Four innings, no earned runs so far this season. He, his stuff is just popping. He is probably going to see the big leagues at some point this year. I don't know what context. Unfortunately, I do think it's going to be due to injury or ineffectiveness. You look like a guy like in your Marte or um, if Kirkring isn't cutting it, you can definitely see a guy like Michael Mercado coming in and, um, and, and, stepping in and, and take, excuse me, tackling innings for this Phillies team. It definitely looks like he's poised to. And another person that I kind of want to highlight is Cody Clemens. Cody Clemens obviously played with the big league team a little bit last year, got him in the Matt Veerling and um, Nick Maton trade that sent Gregory Soto over here. So far, I mean, he tore the cover off the ball in, in spring training and now it looks like he's carrying that over right into AAA to begin the season. He's hitting 313 with a 952 OPS um, to start this season down in, in AAA. So very good to keep him hot. I'm sure we'll see him at some point this season. Um, so good to have that guy um, tearing it up. Happy for for uh, Cody Clemens. I was, I've was i been a Cody Clemens guy for, for a while now, so it's good to see him tearing the cover off the ball. And then um, getting into next segment. Oh, that concludes the minor league digest for today. I will be back reporting whenever. Excuse me, that's bugging me. I know that's disgusting. And I'm sure this brand new fancy pants mic uh, definitely picked it up. Unlike my old one that didn't pick up anything if I wasn't holding it directly here. So looking at, he was a Phil. He was a Phil. Uh, my guy beat the Phillies in the 2009 World Series, had statistically the worst season of his career as a Phil, and then went right back to Pittsburgh and was good again. That is, of course, A.J. Burnett. Now, like I mentioned, A.J. Burnett, no, no, not, no, uh, no stranger to the NL East, began his career with the Florida Marlins. 
He then uh, went to New York with the Yankees, beat the Phillies, like I mentioned, in the 2009 World Series. In 2014, decided to take his talents to Philadelphia, signed a one-year $15 million deal. Um, in 34 games, 213 and two-thirds innings, he had a 4.59 ERA, so not great. But here's the thing. Not great for what we wanted out of A.J. Burnett. If he was your five starter, you take that. You take a 4-5 ERA within 213 innings, but he was signed to be like your 1-2 at that point. Um, That was still when the Phillies were starting to get really bad, like really bad. Uh, had his mutual option decline by the, like the Phillies and Burnett decided to part ways mutually. Uh, and then he went into Pittsburgh one more year and then retired. One note that I, that I love about AJ Burnett, um, growing up, I was a big Call of Duty fan. I'm sure like many of you were, uh, specific, specifically zombies. I'm a big zombie guy. Everybody knows I love Walking Dead. I love, you know, Last of Us, um, anything to do with zombies, um, and obviously Call of Duty has their zombie mode. I love it to death. How does Call of Duty keep sucking me in every year? They just go, hey, we got zombies. You want in? And I go, yeah, I do. Yeah, I do. So I buy it every year for the zombies. One thing I learned about AJ Burnett on through his Instagram and, and different things is he's a huge zombies fan, Call of Duty zombies specifically. His entire back is actually a Todd Zombies like... um. Uh, like a mural i don't know back tattoo i really don't know how to describe it but his whole back is all cod zombies which i thought was uh was very interesting so um shout out to aj burnett uh now getting into the series preview against the cardinals like i mentioned i'm recording this during the phillies cardinals first game of the series uh we had spencer turnbull versus miles michaelis Game two, originally it was Zach Wheeler versus Zach Thompson. Now that has been switched. It is Zach Wheeler versus Sonny Gray. Sonny Gray being activated from the IL and making his Cardinals debut. So that's going to be a good pitching matchup. Um, he's limited to 65 pitches, so they can work some deep counts. They can get him out of that ball game pretty quickly, get into that Cardinals bullpen, wear it down a little bit. Uh, and then game three, we have Aaron Nola versus Lance Lynn. Lance Lynn, I love Lance Lynn. Mass equals gas. God, I love when, you know, strikes out, grabs the groin. I love Lance Lynn. So big tell-all series. Um, it's going to be evenly matched, I think, at, at this point in the season. I do ultimately think the Phillies are a better team than than the Cardinals, and I think a lot of analysts and uh, fans agree. But it's tough. I mean, playing in St. Louis, the Phillies are, are a 500 team in St. Louis, so... They just got to figure it out. Take two out of three. Take care of business. You know, that's basically what, oh, what am I like? It's basically what the series is. It's just take care of business. Do what you got to do. Come back home and, and let's rock and roll. So that's going to do it for me tonight. Um, thank you guys so much for listening. Follow all socials and everything down below. I will be back on Tuesday. To, no, Tuesday. I'll be back on Wednesday to talk. No, it's a Thursday. Is this a four games? Hold on. Pause, 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 pause. Is this a four-game series against, or is it a four-game series against the Pirates? Because my timing is all sorts of screwed up. Um, scores, I just want to go like schedules, dude. Not now. Standings, news. I hate the MLB app so much. I don't care. I just want to see schedule, please. Oh my god, this is... How do you do anything on this stupid app? Oh my god. I... Stupid, stupid. Stupid app. Um... It is a four-game series against the Pirates. Okay, that answered my question. So I'll be back Thursday, uh, Wednesday night. Go over the series against the Cardinals, talk about the Pirate series, and then we'll go from there. So like I said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.